Hello, I'm Daniel Clanton. I'm the Vice President of Technology and Innovation here at Tall Valley Community College, and I'm going to go over some of the systems and subsystems that you're going to be using as, uh, with your time here at Tall Valley Community College. The first site I want you to go to is my.cvcc.edu. You should see the screen that I have behind me. Here, you'll be able to access all our systems, uh, our learning management system Blackboard, your email, self-service, and the CVCC portal. And I'll go over each of these here in a minute. The email is probably the most easiest thing to get into once you get into it. It's a little difficult because once you do sign into your account for the first time, it's going to want you to sign up multi-factor authentication. So you'll get a window that says, hey, we'd like some more information. This is where you're going to download an app on your phone. It's available on all platforms. And it basically bonds your cell phone number to our system. So that way, if anyone's trying to access your account or your information um, without your knowledge, you'll get a flag that says, do you want to approve or deny? Of course, if it's not you signing in, you want to deny. That'll keep your account safe because there's a lot of pertinent information and personal information that's available in these systems that we don't want to allow others to have access to. So the first one that we're going to click is email. And that's just right over here. And all this does is take you to Outlook.com. So if you just want to access your email directly, you can just go to Outlook.com. I've got a screenshot behind me that shows Outlook and what I want to, you know, I'm not going to cover all the ins and outs of email. We've used email before, but if you go in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see these nine dots. These nine dots reveal all the apps that are available to you. I have a little bit more apps than you do, but you'll take notice that you can get back to your email. You can go into Word online, Excel online, PowerPoint online, and OneDrive. Now Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, you're probably already familiar with. We're processing spreadsheets and presentations, but OneDrive is cloud storage. What that allows you to do is create an online Word document, type your essay or paper, and you can save it in your OneDrive. This is important because you don't have to lug around some sort of flash drive or an external hard drive or save it locally to your machine. It's always readily available to you on the cloud. This will also allow you to go into Blackboard, and I'll show you this a little bit later. You can submit those papers or Excel spreadsheets or your PowerPoint presentations directly from your cloud storage in OneDrive. Now, before we get too far down the road and talk about email, there's a few things about email I want to make you aware. There's no solicitation between students, so meaning that you're not allowed to offer anything to students, like have kittens available for free or other things such as that. And the reason that we have this policy is because from time to time, the system gets a lot of spam and malicious email, phishing email. Now, this is not the phishing that we're talking about with the rod and reel that you may go to the lake. This is where you're the fish. So these messages, you know, for an example, these are some of the messages we've gotten in the last couple of years. Do you want a job in HR? Would you like a free Amazon gift card? Click this link. Would you like to apply to this job? Click to this link. Those links are deadly. They're deadly to your personal information and anything that you provide to them. Some links are malicious. When you click them, you automatically lose access to your account. Others take you to web forms where you can fill them out. And, you know, it's easy to just sit and think, oh, I'll never click those messages. But we all have weak moments and we're all humans. And these are socially engineered to lure you in and to fish. So we have a few ins and outs. Just be mindful. From time to time, you're going to get an email from me. So if you see this face and then profile picture, you might get an email that says, hey, there's a phishing scam going around. I'll tell you who the account is sending the message, what the subject line, and probably a brief description of what it is. If you get that message from me and then you have that message I'm referring to, just delete it. Make sure that you do not click any of the links. No further actions are taken. If you do click those links, then reply to my message and say, I clicked on the link. I will take appropriate action at that time, and then I will be back in contact with you. The other thing you can do, and I'll tell you just straight out in that message is, you need to change your password as soon as possible. So you can do that, get your password changed, set it to whatever you want, and then from that point, we'll monitor your account, and then we'll stop the spread. You'll probably get one of those uh, authenticator approve or deny messages I told you on your cell phone earlier. 
you know, of course, if someone's trying to access your account with an L password, it'll flag, just click deny. There's a few things that we can do on campus and there's a few things that we can't do on campus. As you can see behind me, I have the acceptable use policy and it goes through uh, all the different ins and outs of things that are acceptable. You are allowed to bring a device, whether your cell phone, a tablet, a laptop, MacBook, and sit in the student center and use our free Wi-Fi uh, to browse the internet and do uh, various sundry things, whatever you may want to do. But there are a few things that we do block and we do keep you from doing just because uh, the state of North Carolina doesn't allow it. One is, there's no peer-to-peer -peer gaming, so there's no, no reason for you to bring your Xbox or your PlayStation or your Switch. You can't access it. It won't allow you to connect those systems at all. Also, even if you're using a PC or a MacBook, you still can't do peer-to-peer -peer gaming on that. The other thing is, it's pretty strand, uh, standard. Don't hack anybody. Don't deliver viruses. Don't deliver spyware. Um, don't try to access directories that are yours. And this goes into the effect of don't share your password. Don't let another student have your username and password and don't allow them to have your username and password. Either way, you can't share passwords to log somebody else in. That's not an acceptable use. The other thing is if you find a student has logged in or left themselves logged in, it is your responsibility to log them out before you log in and not access any of their information. I'll go back to our kick page here, my.cvcc.edu, uh, my and from here, I'm gonna go to self-service. Self-service has a lot, that's the purple and white icon right here. If you go to self-service, yours is gonna look a little different than mine because I'm an employee, but there's two definite things that you're gonna be of interest here in this portal. One is financial aid. So if you've been awarded any scholarships or federal assistance, your awards will be found inside this little tile right here. It will also tell you the status of those tiles. So if you are, uh, how much you've received, how much has been used, and how much you can have over the lifetime of your academic journey. Some things you can only use in a semester, some things last a year or two. You can find all that information in the financial aid. If you have any questions, you can go to the student center and contact a financial aid officer. The other thing that's here is, for me, it says advising, but for you, it's going to say student planning. Student planning will show you what courses you are automatically registered for, where they're located, what the teacher is, and what delivery method it is, whether it be an online course only, a hybrid course, or a fully seated. It'll tell you the buildings, the locations, start times, end times, all that can be found under student planning. If you keep scrolling in student planning, you're going to have a, a program assigned, a major assigned, It'll also tell you your academic progress in that major. So as you go through and you complete courses, it's going to actually populate that plan. Later on, after your first semester, so no new student is allowed to access online registration their first semester, they must meet with an enrollment manager. But after that, you'll be able to enroll in courses online. You can add them, it looks just like Amazon, you go through, you search a course, I may want to take CIS 110 or ACA 111 or English 101. You click, the, uh, you search the classes you want, click them on the left tile, add them to cart, and then go to cart and you can pay. Simple as that, never have to come back on campus again. And that's a little bit about self-service. One other note is if you become a co-op and you work as an employee uh, part-time for the college, you have the employee tile that I have highlighted here. From there, you'll actually be able to see your W-2s, and that's where you can get your tax information for the year. If we go back to our page, we go down to this icon down here, the My CVCC portal. It's kind of a work in progress. It's not exactly where we want it to be, but we are working on it. You're gonna see several tiles available to you, probably not as many as mine, but you'll see again, as I mentioned earlier, I repeat these tiles multiple times so that you always have access. No matter what system you go into, you can always get to another system. On this page, you can see that we have campus announcements. We haven't started yet, so we don't have um, announcements yet. Your faculty office hours will be listed here. They'll be also listed in your courses, and I'll show you where those are. But if you're looking for a faculty that's not your own or you're not taking a class from, this is where you can see where their office hours are. We also have food trucks. And their schedule, they come on campus um, periodically from time to time, sometimes in the morning, sometimes during lunch. And you can find their schedule here. 
The last system that I'll cover is Blackboard. Many of you are probably familiar with Canvas, the learning management system. This on CBCC, we use Blackboard for our learning management system. When you first log into Blackboard, you'll notice this right here in the middle, My Courses. This is where all your courses will show eventually. Now, don't freak out if you see that there's nothing there yet. We had not loaded courses until a couple of days before the actual start time. That allows for students to make adjustments to their schedule without overburdening the systems. They will show up, and when they do, they'll probably be grayed out. But they will have this little marker underneath them or right next to them, like I have it here, available on August 14th or available on August 15th, but you won't be able to click on them. You can see I have a course here uh, that I taught in the spring. It was last available on May 18th. Courses, uh, no student is allowed to do any work inside of a course until the official start date of that course, and that's why they grayed out. But they will become available on their start date at 12.01 a.m. So you can stay up until midnight of the day of and access your courses. Now, they are available to you 24-7, 365. It doesn't matter any time, day or night, during the week, Monday through, Monday through Monday, they are always available to you to access and get in. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see some other Blackboard general information. There's one particular section that I want to draw your attention to. So if you're going to take an online course, you're going to need to complete the enrollment verification assignment or the EVA. The EVA is exceedingly important for online students. Now, don't freak out if you're in a seated course or a hybrid course and see the EVA. Instructors kind of reuse their templates from time to time. You can take it if you need to or if you're directed to. But for online courses, you must complete the EVA in your first couple of days of an online course. So if you're taking four online courses, you're going to have four separate EVAs. And you need to complete that EVA in each and every one of those courses one time. Once you've completed it, you're done. You're done. That is your academic attendance. So from at that point, you won't get dropped. However, if you start an online course and do not complete the EVA, you will be automatically dropped from your course. So it's exceedingly important that you complete that. You can see that we have other announcements over here on the left and the right. We have some links for you to other help guides. Another thing worth mentioning is from time to time, Browsers like Safari, Firefox, uh, and Chrome, they do security updates. And when they do security updates, sometimes they don't mesh well with Microsoft security. So when you try to log in and you're getting, you'll get a weird message or you may just unknown user or user error, before you uh, submit a help desk ticket or email us or actually call us, try a different web browser. If you like Chrome, that's great. Chrome works really good. But if Chrome is starting to not work so well for you, try Safari or try Firefox. All these are free and available to download and probably on your computer already. If you were to need to help, whether you need your password changed or you've got, um, you've got a new cell phone number, you're not allowed to change your cell phone number in the system, but we can help you with that. Just go to help desk at cbcc.edu. You can email us or you can call at 327-7000-4444 or call 4 for help. Now I'm going to go into one course that you should hopefully have access to, and you will have access to this course throughout the duration of time while you're here at Catawba Valley Community College. This is the CVCC New Student Orientation course located right here. If we drop into that course, you're initially going to go into Announcements, and it will look like this. First thing I'd like to draw your attention to are these five buttons. Announcements, getting started, coursework, my grades, and student support. These will be the same five buttons that you have in Blackboard for all your courses. That way, you'll know where all the information is, whether you're taking an English course or a biology course. It's always segmented and organized accordingly under these buttons. The first place you're going to stop after you get out of announcements is getting started. Getting started is going to show you one very important document, and that's the instructor syllabus. The instructor syllabus will have your instructor's contact information, their email address, their office location, their office hours, but it will more importantly talk about the expectations of the course. What you need to do for this particular assignment, if there's a midterm, if, the, if it's broken into weeks, 
if it's scheduled into discussion boards, if you have to do a discussion board, how many do you have to do, do you have to reply to other students, all this information will be housed inside the instructor syllabus. So it's exceedingly important that one of the first things that you do is review all of your instructor syllabi for each one of the courses that you're taking. That way, when you get into week eight, you don't have this, oh my goodness, I've got this project due and this group project due and then I've got a paper I've got to do. Make sure that you get in there, read those documents and plan your semester accordingly. You know, we're getting you started on the right foot by giving, uh, giving you this information for new student orientation. We want to get you into these systems, into these courses and get you started and keep you persistent. So make sure that you go into instructor syllabus. It'll also give you all the expectations on whether or not you need to use APA style or MLA style, whether you're writing a paper or if it needs to be work cited. All these details will be inside this document. The next place we want to look at is coursework. Coursework is where you're going to find the EVA. So this is, a, this is kind of like a course I created for you, so it's not an actual academic course. There's no grade assigned to this, but in your courses, in your online courses, you're going to have an EVA and it'll be located right here, number one or possibly in the second spot. But it's going to be close to the top under coursework. That's the quiz, that's the assignment you need to do. It is repetitive, it is the same in each course, but it is important that you complete it. It's, it shows academic progress. It shows that you completed some sort of work. I've also left some uh, important links here back to that my.cbcc.edu, your email, self-service, and a help site for frequently asked questions. I've left my policy here as well, but we'll scroll down a little bit to just show you some examples of what a discussion board is and some of the things uh, like what a sample assignment and a sample test. So if we go over to discussion board, we can see that we've got module one and with module one, this is the original poster. It's going to be at the very top. This is, I'm the instructor, so I posted it. So if you want to reply, you just click reply, scroll down, you'll have this little text box open. And it'll just start typing. And then you'll hit submit. It's very important that you don't click the save draft. If you click save draft, you'll be able to see the submission, but, you, but your instructors and your peers will not be able to see the submission. So make sure that you actually click submit. From there, what you would do is, a lot of faculty members want you to reply to another student. So after you've made your first initial post off the, you know, what your instructors posted, you'll wanna go down and read the comments. Click reply. top in the box and hit submit and then your message will will show directly under theirs and that's how you do a discussion board if we go back to coursework we'll go into an example uh, test when you click on an example to, uh, when you click on a test you're going to immediately be presented with instructions now when we historically think of a paper test like on an eight and a half sheet of paper you see all the questions at once, and it could be 20 questions, it could be 50 questions, it could be multiple choice, multiple answer. Well, Blackboard allows those same functions, whether it's matching, fill in the blank, short, uh, or essay. But it has a little bit of a twist. Some instructors will like to just present you one question at a time, instead of showing you all at once. They will also, Blackboard will allow them to only allow you to go forward, meaning once you go to question two, you can't go back to question one. The other thing that you need to be mindful of is Blackboard can time exams, and so you have a time limit to complete them. So make sure that you read these instructions. Also, that should be in the instructor syllabus that will explain if you can only see one question at a time or if your midterm is gonna be timed uh, or uh, other functions that may be in there. So if we go ahead and click continue, we can see our questions here. I've got a true false. Well, you're not with us today, so we'll say false, but since you're watching my video, I'll go ahead and say true. These are radio buttons. See, I can only select one option or the other. The same for the next question. I can only select one option or the other. That's a multiple, um, multiple choice question, but this is a multiple answer question, and sometimes this can mess you up. 
you'll see that we have these boxes. And if you see a question with boxes, that means that you can do multiple answers or just one answer. And from here, we can click Save and Submit. Now, this is a pretty short quiz, nothing to it, three questions, but we all love our cell phones. We all love to pick up our cell phones and you can absolutely take your assessments and assignments on your cell phone. However, make sure that if you're using a mobile device that you were on dedicated Wi-Fi. Do not take a large scale assessment on a mobile device at all. So if you're, if you're gonna take a midterm, which may be 100 questions, or a final that may be 100 questions, you wanna be seated at a computer with stable internet. I would not risk using a mobile device. Mobile devices don't connect on cellular towers the same way as they do with Wi-Fi. So if you're out and about and you're taking on cellular, it'll bring you up the whole test and you'll be able to complete the entire test. And then when you go to hit this button, save and submit, Lightboard's gonna ask you to log in. And that means that you've locked that assessment and you can't get back in it and it's lost all your answers. So what you need to do at that point, if that happens and you don't listen to me, then contact your instructor immediately. Email them, tell them what you did and tell them what happened. And most of the time they'll reset it so that you can have another attempt. But at least in the second attempt, make sure you're using an actual stable um, device like a laptop or a desktop uh, with stable internet. So we hit submit, it's gonna ask you, are you sure? Yes, I am. You can click okay, and it will normally show you what you scored on it. And you can see I got 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, and I got zero of that because I did not provide the right answer. If we go down to our last example, we can see example papers. So with example papers, you have three options. Add comment is really not an option. That isn't gonna submit your paper. But you can do it kind of like a discussion board where you have the little box and text box and, or text box and you can start typing directly. And this is another example of do not use your cell phone or a mobile device while on a cellular connection to do this because you can use this to actually write a three page paper but when you click submit, it's going to have lost its connection with you. And it's gonna ask you to log back in and all that work and all that effort you did to put into your paper is now lost. So make sure if you're going to use this type of way to submit your paper, make sure that you're on a stable internet and stable connection. The other way and more common way is uploading a file. So remember when we started our discussion, we had online uh, Word. And so you could uh, type your paper in online Word, you could save it over into um, OneDrive, and from OneDrive, you could click Browse Cloud Services, and it will give you the option to click into your OneDrive and automatically select your file and pull it down. And so you can, you can use OneDrive to submit, uh, select your file, or if you like a more traditional method where you have Word on your desktop, you could actually just local back to the uh, machine and get it off the hard drive or your My Documents folder. And that concludes my uh, spiel about technology. I hope that you have a great semester and get started on the right foot. And don't forget, if you need us for any reason, you can always reach out here by email on the help desk if you have any other trouble. Thank you.